today what we wanted to do is we wanted to bring in two of the top SBA business lending experts that we work with and rehash some of the basics. You know, what is SBA financing? How is it used? You know, where, where, what does business financing in general look like? And then talk a little bit about the environment today. In today's economy, more people than ever are looking to buy and sell businesses. But how do you do it? Welcome to The Deal Board, presented by Transworld Business Advisors. Straight talk about real deals and real people. Listen to stories, interviews, and expert advice to help your business sale, merger, or acquisition process. Now, here are your business exit experts, Andy and Jessica. Welcome back, everybody. In this episode of The Deal Board, we're going to be rehashing another one of our most requested and favorite topics, and that is financing for business acquisitions. Yeah, I do. Listen, it is so important, and the marketplace is still hot, which is good. I mean, you know, even though we're having inflation, even though we have uh, uncertain times, sometimes with banking, when they're coming and looking at these assets that are increasing in value so quickly, they're still aggressive. We still see the bankers calling us and wanting to get involved in deals. So that is good, is good for buyers. Even though prices may be up, the cost of money is still cheap. Yeah. And there's still a lot of it out there. So today what we wanted to do is we wanted to bring in two of the top SBA business lending experts that we work with and rehash some of the basics. You know, what is SBA financing? How is it used? You know, where, where, what does business financing in general look like? And then talk a little bit about the environment today. So I've got John Wall with me. He's with Live Oak, ba Live Oak Bank. He's a senior vice president. He's been working with the Transworld teams for many, many years, and he's been working in the SBA lending world for many, many years. So we, we go over that what is SBA financing? Are you qualified for SBA financing? Um, what are some of the key attributes that bankers look for? And then, and then we talk a little bit about the world today and what does the lending environment look like? But spoiler alert, it's still a really good lending environment. Yeah, it is. And I speak to Lynn Ozer, a president of multifunding in Philadelphia. Uh, Lynn has a long background. She doesn't want to say how long, but she has a long background of being involved in NAGO, which is the National Association of Gov Government Guaranteed Lenders. She worked as a uh, SBA lending specialist in many different banks. Uh, she was actually president of the SBA uh, in for one of their branches. Uh, she has been uh, she's worked for the SBA directly in the government. So she is a wealth, wealth of knowledge. We talk a lot about what we were talking about in the previous episodes of what's acceptable in some of the ad backs. What are the banks going to look at as far as earnings? What are the, what's happening right now with 2020 and the uh, coronavirus? And what are people looking at? And so it's a wonderful kind of look into someone whose mind is all about SBA lending. And Lynn is just a wealth of information. She's a great, she's a great speaker too. So yeah. you you'll enjoy this. Yeah. And so, so if you're, you know, thinking about selling your business, I think it's important to understand how this side works because you are going to get offers with buyers using SBA financing um, options. And if you're a buyer, this is very important to understand, understand how these lending programs work, how you can even get pre-qualified as a buyer and strengthen your offer in a competitive bidding environment. So love having both of these, um, both of these guests on today, and hopefully it brings a lot of value to our listeners. Yeah, it's a great episode, and this one will be referred to for a long time, or at least until they change the rules, which we don't <laughs> think is going to happen anytime soon. No, no. I think it's good for now. So let's jump into it. Let's do it. Transworld Business Advisors is the world's largest business brokerage and mergers and acquisitions firm with over 500 brokers in nearly 200 offices worldwide. Transworld's team handles thousands of business sales every year. To be connected with a qualified business broker or learn more about the buying and selling process, visit tworld.com forward slash the deal board or call 888-719-9098. Welcome back to the deal board, everybody. And today, as you know, we're rehashing one of our most popular topics, and that is how to get financing for a business acquisition. You actually don't have to pay for a business all in cash. And today we have one of the top SBA experts with us, John Wall from Live Oak. John, you've been on the show multiple times before, but welcome back. 
Thanks, Jessica. It's always a pleasure to be part of the deal board and have the opportunity to speak to you and your followers. Yeah. So we've had this conversation a few times before, John, but I think it's always good to rehash this for new listeners, remind um, recurrent listeners of this topic. So let's just start with some basics. You know, what what is business financing? Like what type of financing is available for business buyers? Yeah, I think it's great. I mean, I think people a lot of the time think that they can go to their normal commercial bank or their normal credit union and obtain a traditional commercial loan. Uh, Commercial loans typically are not a great fit for business acquisition because of some of the additional risks involved with them. So the government back in the 1950s came out with the SBA program, which has an enhanced credit criteria that helps to take on some of the risk for these types of transitions. So typically, the program that is mostly used for these business acquisition financing, it's called the SBA 7A program. This is a program that allows a buyer to obtain up to 90% financing for the acquisition of a business. They are going to, lenders are going to look at the historical cash flow of the business. They're going to look at the personal credit of the buyer. They're going to look at the transferable experience, going to look at credit scores, The terms for these types of loans are typically going to be 10 years. They're typically going to have an interest rate that's based off an index of prime and goes up to prime plus 2.75 adjusting quarterly. So with these loans, the SBA guarantee takes on some of the risk that you would normally see, such as change of ownership. And the fact that these businesses do not have a whole lot of collateral. Typically, these businesses are cash flow blue sky, future goodwill types of businesses where the repayment is the cash flow, not the collateral. So the SBA 7A program is a great match for buyers looking to obtain financing for the acquisition of a business. Yeah, it's a great program. And I think, I mean, in the deals that we do, almost 100% that are financed are done through SBA programs like 7A. We, We do a couple 504s that we might want to touch on later. But I think one thing you brought up John, that was important, and it's a big myth um, that we hear a lot, is that the SBA program is a program provided to lenders. So it's still banks, it's still lenders that are lending the money. Sometimes I hear buyers like, oh, I'm not qualified for an SBA loan, but that's that's really usually not true. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, to give you a little more detail, the SBA program is where the lender actually provides the financing. So it is the bank's capital that is going into the loan. What the SBA does is the SBA provides a guarantee to that lender in the case of default and after they liquidate all the collateral. So currently the SBA is providing up to a 75% guarantee to the bank, but the bank still has real exposure on there. And I think it's important to point out some of the eligibility requirements for an SBA loan. Um, You know, you cannot have previously defaulted on any government loans. So that could be a student loan. That could have been an FHA guaranteed loan. That could have been a previous SBA loan. So it's important that there are certain kind of knockouts. Um, Another real important one is if you have a bankruptcy, um, not all lenders will uh, be comfortable with that. And the SBA does provide its credit box, and then lenders have the ability to be more conservative than the SBA allows when it comes to bankruptcies or maybe previously previous charge-offs and credit scores and things of that nature. Yeah. So if you meet the SBA eligibility, then you're technically qualified for an SBA program. You just have to find a lender if that's willing to do your deal with you, right? Correct. Yeah. Yep. So, so great programs, like I said, almost um, 100% of our deals that are financed are through SBA programs, probably about 60 to 70% of all deals use some type of SBA financing. It's widely used. I like it because it, it, it's actually, you know, one of those government programs that is giving, is doing real good in the community, like really infusing capital back into small businesses. There's been a lot of change, um, actually speaking about infusing cash back into small businesses. There's been a lot of change over the last two years. What's kind of the state of the union when it comes to business financing for acquisitions? So I would say we're as back to normal as one could be right now. Obviously, in 2020, 2021, SBA got a lot of great press because of the PPP program, really helped to get companies through tough times. 
Um, and so that, that was fantastic. And it kind of became brought SBA into everybody's, uh, into a lot of business owners' homes. Um, the good thing about SBA is that it is not necessarily, although it's a government backed program, how efficient a lender works through it is really based off that lender's experience in there. Um, there are, you hear this all the time, Jessica, where, ah. Oh, my neighbor had a horrible experience with SBA or, you know, my, my father's friend, but it, it is really no different. And the timelines of it are no worse than a traditional commercial type of deal. Most transactions can be completed from application to closing in 45 to 60 days, which really lines up well with buyer's expectations and seller's expectations and their due diligence. So currently there's not any special programs, you know, it's as normal as it is. There is funding available. Um, they don't actually allocate specific dollars, but they do have it um, tied to uh, an allocation necessarily um, as part of the budget. Um, right now we're working our way through these continuing resolutions uh, but the SBA will has plenty of money in that and has plenty of money in the proposed budget for 2022. So good news for buyers out there, good news for sellers um, that there is financing available. And, you know, I don't see this going away, um, the opportunity or availability for SBA financing going away. I think it only could become more enhanced with um, you know, a larger guarantee or possibly the waiving of the fees with some of the proposed legislation that's out there. Yeah, there's some really great programs over the last two years. And, and you know, it was great, but I think the SBA 7A programs are great, even baseline, right? And and it's Absolutely. it was, yeah, it was really fun to see um, that that program and actually like the, the Small Business Administration in general being brought to the forefront over the last two years with the programs they offer to help business owners and help employers. So you did bring up another good point that um, I do want to reiterate and, and kind of enhance with our listeners is that um, not every, uh, business bank is created equal when it comes to SBA financing. So, um, when we're working with our clients a lot, we, we talk about using specialists that specialize in business acquisition loans and small and SBA loans in general. Um, you know, you can ask sometimes there's this thing called preferred lender status. Sometimes that's great. Some, some banks that don't have preferred lender status are really great at the process too, but I think it just goes back to, you want experts in the field. Um, just like we talk about with lawyers all the time, you don't really want a general practitioner. You want a transaction lawyer. When you're buying a business, you don't, need your general business banker, you need an SBA specialist, right, John? Yeah, absolutely. And obviously, I'm partial to Live Oak Bank. You know, we've been the country's largest SBA lender for the last four years now. But, you know, I, it, it's a very small world with folks that do a great job. And definitely not every deal fits one specific lender's guidelines. So regardless of you work with Live Oak or another institution, what I highly recommend, and you, and you just hit the nail right on the head, is you have to work with somebody that specializes in SBA financing. You don't want to work with an institution that maybe only does four or five of these a year or somebody that you're going to be their guinea pig because this is most likely the largest purchase that you're making, the buyer is going to make in their lifetime. And you want to make sure that the team you have is truly a professional. When that comes down to, you know, working with the folks at Transworld, who's our expert is in business brokerage and your attorney and your CPA and your lender, because it really is important for the deal to work with experts. It makes the process a whole lot easier. No, definitely a lot easier. I mean, it, it's really the difference. Like when we see deals take, you know, two or two months to close versus like there's some that have taken six months to close. And it's usually because there's a lender that's unexperienced in the process. Um, so yes, and and talk to your business broker, really. The business brokers have a Rolodex of bankers and they know which lender will do what size deals, what types of industries, and they're a wealth of knowledge on what is the best bank um, to go to for your transaction. So let's oh, go ahead, John. Did you have something? Yeah, to I was add? just I was just gonna say I think that people hear small business administration and think that small business SBA loans are really only for small types of deals. The SBA 7A program allows for financing up to $5 million. And then there's a number of lenders like Live Oak Bank that can provide additional financing up and beyond that. In our case, we can provide financing up to $9 million. 
Uh, we also have the opportunity, and as do other lenders, to look at conventional. Sometimes SBA is not the um, path to go if there's an earnout, or the seller is going to roll equity, or there's some sort of uh, part of the transaction terms that makes it ineligible. And then just to touch on, you had mentioned the 504 program. Right. A 504 program is another um, SBA type of, of product that is solely used for real estate. So, and you can combine that with a 7A. You know, you can also 7A can also be used for the purchase of real estate. I think we see more and more transactions these days, uh, including real estate, because the seller just kind of wants to take all of their chips off the table. Um, and when you combine it and only use the 7A, a lot of the time you can get up to a 25-year term. So uh, the 504 is solely for real estate types of uh, purchases. The 7A can be used for acquisition and real estate. So just wanted to share that with your, with your listeners. Yeah, there's it. You're, you're right. It's not just small deals. There's actually the the cap's pretty large, so there's a lot of money out there right now. So let's talk about how you get started. Now on the seller side, we'll make it super easy. If you have a, a good business broker, like a Transworld broker, and you're selling your business, they're going to take your business to a couple different banks that they know will finance the deal and they'll pre-qualify it on the business side. But if you're a buyer, John, like how, how do buyers start engaging in this process, investigating if they qualify for SBA financing, how much, things like that? Yeah, no, that that's great. I think, you know, with each transaction, there's kind of two pieces to the pie. There's the business being acquired and there's the buyer doing the acquisition. So um, on the on the buyer side, we're happy to pre-qualify you um, as much as we can. It's not like a mortgage where you get this, you know, uh, approval letter that you can go shop with. But what it does allow you to do is to have somebody that, you know, has the experience. Most of our lenders have over 20 years of experience where they can give you some feedback. In order to obtain that feedback, what we look for from the borrowers are last three years of personal tax returns, a SBA personal financial statement, along with an eligibility or personal information form. That's going to give us enough information to say, hey, does this buyer have the equity available to put the down payment down? You know, What are their personal obligations? How much money do they need to take out of the business they're buying? You know, are they eligible? Do they have any felonies or any criminal charges or any bankruptcies? And then also it gives us a brief insight on what their previous ex professional experience is. Do they have transferable experience in the business that they're buying? Are they, you know, are they um, experienced from a sales standpoint, marketing, HR, you know, those sort of criteria that you would want to see in an owner operator? Yeah. And, and I think it is a good process. It's not a process a lot of our buyers go through. Um, a lot of them actually wait to find the deal and then get matched up with a banker. But um, going through this process ahead of time and having um, a, a really good expert team in place and and probably like, I know it's not pre a pre-qualification letter, but just like some type of pre-existing relationship and qualification can move you to the top of the list in a competitive bidding process. Um, I, I I like to tell people too, like to tell buyers that if you are competing for a business, um, the seller and the broker aren't just going to look at the number that you write down on your LOI. They're going to look at the terms of the LOI and things like that in terms of what the seller's on the hook for after the deal. And they're going to look at your team. What kind of team have you assembled around you? Are they a team of experts that are really good at doing small business transactions? Or are they, you know, a team that doesn't do a whole lot of deals and it's going to make the seller's life a little bit more challenging. So do, going through this pre-qualification process with a bank, while it seems preemptive, if you don't have a deal, if you do end up in a competitive bidding situation, it can really help your cause of winning that deal. Yeah, I would say it separates you from other buyers out there. Um, you know, the the business acquisition market is competitive. You know, it's not like buying a home these days in Denver, no, Colorado. Not quite yet, that, yeah. But it is. Uh, but it, there are a lot of buyers out there. You know, there are folks leaving corporate uh, jobs, or folks that are have been searching for years for businesses. So you want to have that added value and having somebody review your finances and your experience to be able to call and have that conversation with the business broker about, yes, this is a viable buyer um, is really helpful and can help separate you from the other buyer pool. 
Yeah. So before we wrap up, John, um, Live Oak is these experts we've been talking about. You guys do deals all over the country. Tell us a little bit more about you, Live Oak, and your programs. Yeah, absolutely happy to. So I've been with Live Oak for the last four years. Live Oak was founded in 2008 for the sole purpose of providing capital to capital to America's small business. We specialize in SBA and USDA financing, whereas 80% of all of our loans are in one of these two programs. As I mentioned earlier, we've been the largest SBA 7A lender for the last four years. We do deals in all 50 states. We have SBA lenders that are both in dedicated industries and have knowledge about that industries or and also folks that are generalists that are experts in M&A financing. So I think Live Oak is a tremendous resource for your buyers and would be happy to have a conversation or get them in touch with somebody in their local market. Uh, If somebody would like to reach out to me, Jessica, they can call me at 303 551-4453 551-4453 or email me at john.wahl at liveoak.bank. And we'll drop the information to the show notes too. Um, at Transworld, we do a lot of business with um, Live Oak. Actually, John and I, we've probably been doing business together well, we've been in business nine years, so it's probably almost, it's probably about I, nine years. Yeah. Trans, Transworld has been a fantastic partner of ours, and we really like the professionalism that you all bring to, to the table. And it's all about working with a great team. So thank you for being part of that. No, oh, thank you, John. Well, it was a great interview. I hope listeners took a lot of information out of this and we hope to have you. We know you'll be back on soon. Yeah. So, yep, absolutely. And the call is always free. You know, we don't charge for advice. Even if we may not be the right resource for you, we'd be happy to put you in touch and give you some feedback. So, thank you for allowing me to spend time with you and your listeners today, Jessica. Thanks, John. Hey, Andy, do you know what time it is? It's time for our deal of the week. Deal of the week. Sold. Hey, welcome back, everybody. And it is the old of the week, and we have a returning guest, Aaron Fox of Transworld Business Advisors of Boston. And he has a really interesting deal. We sell a lot of medical deals and practices. I just sold one, and this one is very interesting. We've done a lot of work in the mental health space. And Aaron, sounds like a larger transaction. It was. This one was uh, a great one because it really kept you on your toes from everything from insurance billing to licensing and all of the pieces in between. Uh, This one was in the greater Boston market. So uh, everyone who's dealt with um, anything medical based in Massachusetts knows it's a little bit of an interesting state and how they regulate it. And you're not buying it if you're not a doctor. (laughs) So they're, they're pretty controlling with how they approach it. So when we went into this one, there was it was a pediatric focused um, mental uh, therapy, mental focused therapy clinic and um, behavioral behavioral health facility. Mm. So they worked um, a lot with obviously with kids and they had all about 28 therapists working with them. And so there were all of the different insurance requirements, all of the different regu- uh, regulations around you know, working with children specifically. So we had a lot of steps we had to take to get through this. And then to top it off, we had the COVID onset that really disrupted the flow because Massachusetts was one of the last ones to, in the last states in the country to accept telehealth. So they were shut down for two months and then it's, do we bring them back in? How do we, you know, do um, uh, uh, ABA therapy without it? So it was really, there were a lot of hurdles. Uh, and to top it off, we had owners that were ready to retire and ready to move south because our New England winters are special. <laughs> so we were uh, we're sending more down to you guys in Florida. <laughs> so we were, you know, working with them. We worked through them. We found the right buyer for it that understood the hiring um, the hiring challenges of the industry. And one of the partners at the firm, even though they were out of state did his residency in Massachusetts. So he was able to go and get his uh, license reinstated in mass to be an ownership and on the board of directors for it. So it, wh- what happened with that was going through the whole uh, transition process and the relicensure process and the recontracting process with the insurance companies, they were easily uh, readily recognized so that there was no break in service. So it definitely made for a very interesting deal with a lot of layers. 
So tell me uh, the finances of the deal. They were making what and what did it eventually sell for? Yeah, uh, they were doing just about a million in uh, top line revenue, uh, about 300,000, give or take of that was running, uh, running to the bottom line. And then obviously with, you know, COVID shutdowns and losing those months, that did come in, in as a factor. They fortunately were able to re- rebound. Uh, so we ended up selling it for about just a, a little about 785,000. So it was a good multiple because it came in at a good strong, you know, in that two, two and a half to three range. Great. Sounds like a good deal for uh, another medical business that we do a lot of work in the medical space. So Aaron, if someone wants to sell another medical practice up here in New England, which I know is very popular uh, industry up here, a lot of research being done up here, what's the best way to get in touch with you? Sure. You can always give us a call at 781-773-8922 or send me an email at aaron at tworld.com. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. And we are here with Lynn Ozer from, from Multifunding. Uh, we have had a few people on from Multifunding, including Ami. And uh, we have the expert because today we're talking about getting funded. We're talking about the SBA specifically, and Lynn is an expert. So Lynn, why don't you give us a little background of why you're the preeminent <laughs> SBA expert? Well, that's, um, that's what Ami says. But actually, in reality, I have spent my entire career with SBA lending. I My first job after graduating college with an accounting degree was with the Small Business Administration. And I did work there for five years. And then I've gone on to manage SBA lending departments in community size and um, regional size banks in the mid-Atlantic area for hmm, 40 years. I hate to admit that one. But um, during my tenure as an SBA banker, which I'm now a loan advisor, but I I joined the National Association of Government Guaranteed Lenders, where I still remain as their co-chair for all technical issues. I was the first woman to chair the National Association of Government Guaranteed Lenders, which is the trade association for banks and non-banks that participate in the program. I have been an instructor for the trade association since 2005, teaching lenders across the country the standard operating procedures of the SBA. I've testified in front of Congress on behalf of lenders and borrowers um, for in favor of the programs that are beneficial to small businesses. So that's my background. <laughs> that's <laughs> and, and now I'm spending my time, in addition to training lenders, trying to train entrepreneurs. And that's what we do at multifunding and then assist them in getting um, SBA loans for business acquisitions specifically. Well, let's jump in right there. I mean, obviously you're very, very qualified and worked on both sides of the aisle, including uh, working for the SBA and then jumping in on several levels of SBA banks and non-lenders. And uh, now, you know, with AMI working on packaging and and getting loans done really is what uh, you're a specialist at. So, you know, there's a lot of things that happened over the last two years uh, that there was all kinds of programs and they've all seemed to sunset. So why don't you give us a little bit of an update? What's available now to entrepreneurs? Well, right at the moment through the SBA, the, the programs that are available are their 7A flagship loan program, um, which includes basic um, 7A loans, which are standard loans over 350,000, small loans under 350,000. Um, and those loans under 350 have to meet SBA's minimum credit score, or they have to be processed like a standard 7A loan. Then there's the SBA Express loan. There's community advantage loans that are initiated by non-bank lenders. They're for CDFIs and CDCs and so forth. Uh, And they're restricted to 250,000. And then there's programs for export financing, international trade, and things like that. But as far as subsidy and special programs, they've all sunset at this point in time. The loans under 350,000 still enjoy no fees, which um, is a pretty big deal. But otherwise, SBA has 
some minimum, you know, a minimum amount of reduction on the upfront fees on all the other loans. But other than that, all the bells and whistles have been pulled off of these programs at this point in time. There was a little bit of hope that we were going to get some additional stimulus as part of the build back better bill, but we all know that we should not be holding our breath for that to get done anytime soon. So obviously we're, we have the SBA summoning loan program. Well, that being said, it's an amazing program. I mean, I, I've been around for a little bit long, shorter than an ice age, but I've been around for a while. <laughs> and, you know, I remember back when it was $2 million kind of cap. And right. now we're at $5 million, which really includes a lot of nice businesses for entrepreneurs right. to buy. So right. why don't you talk a little bit about what you're seeing out there as far as people being, you know, what does it take to get an SBA loan? Okay. Um, I think probably most of us are interested in the business acquisition type loans. Is that correct? Or do you yes. want me to talk about yes. the whole gamut? No, no. The um, business act. Okay. Um, business acquisition loans, which are very popular right now. There's a lot of businesses since the pandemic that have been turning over. Plus they call it the silver tsunami with the, um, the baby boomers selling their businesses at this point in time. There's a lot of businesses out there being sold or partners doing buyouts in their business. The beauty of the SBA program is that the sale of a business can take place with someone who has minimal um, down money in relation to conventional type lending. Um, it's especially a good vehicle if you're talking about perhaps an employee who's worked in your business forever and knows the business and knows you know how to operate the business because the SBA lender is basically looking for a deal that cash flows. So if a lender is looking at a business acquisition and the owner of the business is leaving, yes, they add back all the expenses related to that particular owner. But what can't be quantified is what goes out with his brain leaving the business. So when they have somebody in place that may be able to take that person's place, knows the business, knows the customers, knows the supply chain, and has sat basically by their right hand, SBA is pretty much, uh, or most lenders are pretty happy to do that deal with the minimum for a business acquisition, buying a business where you are not the owner, 10% um, down. Of that minimum 10% equity, at least half of that must come from you, the borrower, you, the buyer. 5% can come from the seller in the form of a take back equity loan, which means on standby, no principal, no interest for the life of the SBA loan. That's usually 10 years, unless part of the acquisition includes business real estate. If you're talking about a deal that includes business real estate, you can get a, either a blended maturity over 10 years, or if the real estate is 51% or more of the purchase price, you can actually get an SBA loan for 25 years. Okay, so that means that you still have to put 10% down, and if the seller's providing half, their loan is for 25 years, but that's another story. But anyway, besides the equity contribution, the seller can take back part of the financing in an amortizing loan side by side with the SBA loan, as long as the lender feels that the cash throw off of the business can support it. So that's, again, back to what I was saying before, SBA lenders are cash flow lenders. So if they can support the debt service, they're generally all in because here we have a 75% guarantee from the SBA to make up for the collateral shortfall. So if they feel that they can be repaid, that's great. So of course, the experience of the owner is the big you know, question mark as to whether or not the bank's going to get comfortable with it. But if it's somebody who's been in the business, you know, it's generally not a difficult thing to, to do. Sometimes, you know, same type businesses can buy a business. And this is also an interesting point. If you're buying a business that's exactly like your business and you are going to own this business exactly 
the same way that you own your business, and it is the same NAICS code as your business, SBA could consider that as an expansion. And there's a possibility for 0% down in that particular case when you're talking about an expansion. That's, that's a whole other ball game, which we can talk about in more detail. And then there's also the partner buyout situation where you can also, there's a strong possibility you can get 100% um, SBA financing for a business when anyone who has been an owner of the business for at least two years in the same or greater percentage um, than they are, okay, they, they can purchase the business provided that the debt to worth of the company before the transaction is no greater than nine to one on their most recent interim statement and their most recent fiscal year end. So yeah. nine to one is a pretty highly leveraged company. And if you're within that and you've been an owner of the business for at least two years, you can get 100% of the purchase price negotiated with your partner. Now, of course, because it's not an arm's length transaction, there has to be an outside business valuation done by a qualified business appraiser. Um, SBA also requires outside business valuations on business acquisitions where the um, goodwill or the non-tangibles exceed $250,000 of the purchase price. So and in, if it's a non-arm's length transaction, you always need an outside valuation. But if that's the case, then the, the purchase price needs to be justified. So those are the pretty much the basics for business acquisition lending. That's great. And just a couple of questions out of that. Um, so if someone um, doesn't have direct involvement with the business and is a new buyer, you know, right. uh, how much experience do they need and what's the tolerance perhaps of... The banks are doesn't vary. Andy, that's a really good question <laughs> because that's not okay. going to be a black and white answer, as you can right. imagine. I mean, if they were in a business and managing a business that was so similar, then it's not going to matter that it wasn't the same. But if you're talking about a business where it, the owner who owns it has, you know, um, intangibles in their head that can't be passed on, or they're the one with the sole relationship with all, you know, they were the head of the sales department or they were the, the chief cook and bottle wash, you know, that may be, but if, if the owner's leaving can be easily transferred to someone else and all the other key employees are the same, or the, the buyer has access to expand what the, the, the seller has been doing, you know, the lenders are absolutely willing to look at it. It's just, you know, some people feel like, okay, I'm going to come in with 20% down and some good collateral. And, and the, the lender is going to look at that and say, fine. No, they're really looking at the ongoing ability of the business to continue to throw off cash to service the debt. And one other thing I wanted to add real quick is about the collateral. The banks are not as concerned with the collateral, but as a buyer of the business, you need to understand that if the loan is greater than $350,000, the SBA is required to take as much collateral as necessary to become fully secured. And if you are you know, not fully secured, that's fine too, but they don't leave collateral on the table. So if you have a home or commercial real estate, it's probably going to need to be pledged for the loan. So they won't deny for lack of collateral, but again, they won't leave it on the table. And that's just with every lender, they don't have a choice because that's SBA's rule. Yeah, we've seen that a lot. And so, so let's talk a little bit about some of the special circumstances that have happened in the last couple of years as well. On the business sure. side, uh, getting qualified for the business, you know, deciding what the valuation is, you know, how have people been, I, I just looked at someone's tax returns uh, this morning. And it was literally right. 2019 made a few hundred thousand dollars, 2020 made zero money, 2021 made a few hundred thousand dollars. And, you know, so how are the banks dealing with that these days? In my experience, what the banks are looking at in a scenario you described, 
perfect. You know, it's fully understandable. 2020 hit them and now they're back and their business model actually still holds up and they still have clients and they still have a supply chain. So that's the best possible scenario. Okay. What they have more difficulty in is 2019 was fabulous. 2021 was, I mean, 2020 was off the charts wonderful. 2021, maybe not so good or or the same. And then they're looking at 2022 and saying, okay, what is this company? You know, they manufactured PPE. So now they're, of course, they went crazy in 2020. Everybody needed what they had. But now that we're not necessarily in that world, is their business model sustainable? And that raises more questions. And then there's the other ones that, you know, skyrocketed, were really good before and haven't come back. Why? It, are they obsolete? You know, so it's going to take an, a bank to look at each individual industry and figure it out. It's also another question that I've seen that comes up in due diligence with banks as they're reviewing SBA acquisitions now is, does the new owner have the ability to weather another pandemic? What hmm. is the likelihood of them being able to manage a business that's weathered the storm. So if they see someone that was in business, maybe during the Great Recession, and they turn that around and they live through COVID too, they're going to be really happy. But they, if they have somebody that came into business in you know 2015, was riding high, everything's good, and boom, 2019, and everything fell apart, were they able to regroup, so to speak? Were they able to pull themselves up were they able to pivot? And that's what they're going to look at. So it's incumbent upon the buyer to explain what the situation is. And as far as the business valuation is concerned, any business valuator worth their salt knows what questions to ask, knows how to dig behind the numbers and figure out all the things that I just pointed out to you of why did this happen? Why do those things look like this? Or why do they look like this? Or why do they look like that? and be able to come up with a value. So that's great. And, and, you know, as, as we kind of wrap up, I want to ask you one more thing because there, there are okay. different ways to go out there and get a loan. And why should someone use a company like multifunding? Oh, my favorite question. Yeah. Um, we, okay. Because I've even made the example purely clear by just speaking to you, lenders all have different credit boxes and different appetites. The SBA rules are exactly the same for every lender. How they choose to interpret it is a big variable. And SBA puts out minimum standards. Every bank does what they consider to be prudent lending in whatever scenario comes to play. At multifunding, we've had the opportunity to work with lenders across the country you know, community banks, regional banks, national banks, then non-bank lenders. And because we've been doing this for um, a long time, we have an idea of who those banks are. And the best bank for your particular scenario might not be in your backyard. It may not be your best referral source. It may not be your accountant's favorite bank because they may not be doing this the way that you that you know other banks do we can help structure you know if you have a seller we can help pre-qualify to make sure that the structure works that the the business is being valued properly and help you know when you get somebody who you want to sell it to take them to the bank that we know will will do this deal and that way if you're a broker you can focus on the seller we can focus on the buyer, makes your life easier and gets you to the bottom line. If you don't, they don't get financing, you don't get paid. So we can assist any in any step of the way. We can assist the seller in structuring and we can assist the buyer in getting a, a, a bank. And, and I can't emphasize enough that the bank for each deal is going to be different because every lender has a different tolerance for all the different variables that we discussed. Yeah. And even if they might've been, you know, have some loans in a certain industry, they might not want to continue to loan in that industry. Uh, good point. Very so, good point. 
Elicit, yeah, there's, right. Go ahead. No, there's lots of reasons why they change um, their course. And banks are known for that. They can be walking down this path one day and their shareholders say, had enough, and they go this way. Mm-hmm. And whether you're a borrower or or a broker trying to bring them deals, you don't always know when they're going to change their mind. And I think for you know business acquisitions, there's enough moving parts that to leave the financing to somebody else is probably, you know, gives you um, reason to sleep better at night. Well, we love going to the experts. And Lynn, obviously you are an amazing expert. Uh, Thank thank you you for coming on today. I am going to, I'm going to put all your uh, contact info. I did get your PowerPoint presentation. I'll put your contact info, but if you want to throw out just a plug for the company real quick. Yeah, multi-funding. Um, you can look us up on the web. I'm at L-O-Z-E-R, L-O-Z-E-R at multifunding.com. We are happy to take all your questions, answer anything you might have. We have a multitude of advisors, um, multi-funding advisors um, that would get on the phone with you. We're happy to talk. I think um, the right 800 number, oops, they don't have it. And that um, Andy can provide you with all of that information. So you can write into us, call, and we will help you with any aspect of SBA lending that we can. Yeah, it's 800 276 0690. So, Lynn, thank you for coming on today. Really appreciate it. My pleasure. It. Thanks for having me, Andy. Hey, Jessica, you know what time it is? Money time? Almost. It's time for Listing of the Week. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the deal board. And it is Listing of the Week. And I have the team or part of the team from Trans World Business Advisors of Oregon Central. I have Jonathan Che, our fantastic franchisee, and his agent, Lonnie Woodruff, with us. And they are going to tell us about a very solid listing that they got going on up there. So, and it's a hot industry, right? Right, right. Tell us about it, Lonnie. Yeah, it is. It's a very exciting listing. It's a, it's an e-commerce business uh, in the outdoor power sports industry. It's uh, they do about five million a year. They got about six or six hundred thousand in EBITDA, and the sticker price is uh, three and a half million dollars. Is completely turnkey management, or the owners have scaled themselves out of the business, has complete tenured management, tenured employees, great compensation plans. Everybody's happy. It's uh, it's more of an investment or passive income. It's it's great opportunity. They built this thing to be durable and last. Yeah, and it's scalable too for somebody with a marketing background and and uh, the motivation to grow it. Um, it's ready to go. It sounds like a great deal. I mean, it's been around for a while, right? It's about been around for about 20 years. Yeah, give or take. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's, it's incredible. Yeah, they have a unique way of uh, marketing and it's uh, they outdo their competition and they're kind of the authority in their, their industry. It, it's impressive. Very impressive. Wow. Sounds like a great deal. Uh, I'm sure you're getting a lot of action already, but why don't you tell us how the best way to get in touch with you if somebody wants to learn more? Best way is to call me at the office, uh, 541-920-9026, or give me an email, L-W-O-O-D-R-U-F-F at tworld.com, L. Woodruff at T-World. Excellent. Lonnie and Jonathan, thank you so much for coming on today. I really appreciate it. Thanks, thank Andy. you. Thanks for tuning into the show today. If you like the podcast, share it with your friends on social media. And don't forget to subscribe and leave us a review on your favorite podcasting app. If you have questions, would like to appear, or have suggestions for topics for the show, get in contact with us through our website, thedealboardpodcast.com.